traditional Thursday. We did a traditional reading yesterday, which I just called it Room Casting Plus because I screwed up and grabbed probably like three more decks than what I was supposed to. But uh, it, it turned out okay. Um, I would say it turned out alright. Um, about yesterday's um, drive through RPG uh, rant, uh, the, the little one I did, clearly just from a customer standpoint here, I see that a couple others have joined me, you know, it, it, from the customer standpoint, not from the creator standpoint. From the creator standpoint, um, the basic expert, I'm going to include his video down in the description below as well. Uh, very well thought out, very calmly put, and reiterated many of the points from uh, James Ra James Raggy's video and from Grim Jim's video. Um, basically, even as bad as they are for the creator, it's it's also bad for the customer. And I said it yesterday. I am 43 years old. If I don't like something that I'm reading, I stop reading it. If I don't think I'm going to like something, I just don't buy it. It's very simple. Very simple. I'll probably be covering that a lot more in depth on the next uh, interview I do for the Tribal Podcast. But uh, Yeah. Just my two cents there, people. And I want I want you to watch those videos because this is what you need to know. Uh, James Raggy, uh, Grim Jim, and John Torres, all three of them, all three of those guys are putting themselves at great personal risk. Because much of their much of their income is um, derived from sales on drive through RPG, and uh, of course, uh, mad respect to them. I'm hoping to see more videos uh, come up in the meantime. And I know for some of you tuning into this channel, uh, drive through RPG does not mean a thing to you. But I'm telling you why it should because drive through RPG is sort of like the Amazon of, uh, of RPG books it is the number one seller they, they have market dominance I don't want to call it a monopoly because you can also get these same books many of them you can get them from Amazon you can get them from uh, Lulu.com. If you haven't checked that out, you should. Uh, it's going to take you longer than two or three days to get your books, but um, well worth it. But when you have uh, this is what we what we used to call in the South back when I was a kid. This is someone. This is a an entity that has gotten too big for its britches, and it's time to take them down a run or two. Now, I'm going to say this, they are, they are a private company, yes, they can do whatever they want, yes, and some things are inescapable, yes, but isn't that kind of the problem? It's just you get so big that you think you can just go throwing your weight around, hmm, well, you know, maybe, maybe not, we'll see about that, we'll see how things turn out in the, uh, coming days, weeks, months, years, that sort of thing. I'll be honest with you, there was a there was a time I was looking for uh, role-playing game books in PDF format just just so I wouldn't have a physical library. Now I I understand the importance of having a physical library now. Ladies and gentlemen, don't let anyone tell you, oh, you have to have a minimum of 1,000 books for it to be a library. No, all you have to have is a minimum of a selection. I don't care if your entire library is 10 books, it's still a library. 
you still browse through it. You still have to select a book. You can only really read one at a time unless you got one of those. Uh, this happened in a meme I saw on Twitter. It, it's like a it's like a wheel that's mounted. It has these little platforms where you can open books and you can turn the wheel, read from here, turn it again. Oh, there's another one. It's like having tabs open in a browser. It's pretty. It, in fact, I, I dare I say it probably one of the first encyclopedic browsers ever. It was a pretty, pretty impressive piece of equipment to, to behold. I didn't even know those things existed. It was pretty awesome. Anyway, traditional Thursday, you know how it goes today. We have Viking Oracle, Spirit Animal Oracle, Rider Waite, Lightworkers Oracle, and Runes of the Gods Oracle, naturally. Also, tomorrow will be the big one. If you would like a personal reading, you know how to do it. Go into the description down below. Find my link tree. It's one of the, I think it's the first link there. Send me something off the drive through RPG wish list or the Amazon wish list. Um, I am kind of rethinking the drive through RPG wish list. Just letting you know. Anything $35 and under will get you a full reading. So that's going to be two of these cards, one of these cards, three of these cards, three of these cards, nine of these, and probably more to get two of those, two of those types of readings, and a birthday reading. So, good for you or a uh, gift for someone else. show you what I'm drinking but they're not paying me to advertise so but I do have my tea ready and I will be taking drinks of that in the meantime not by the way Wizards of the Coast is not paying me to advertise so it's just one of my favorite mugs that's all this is before I knew how uh, crappy the company could be anyway so you Fenrir. Oh boy. You know, yesterday many of us were kind of angry. We're letting a lot of our uh, a lot of our anger at the situation really motivate and guide us. You know, Fenrir. Fenrir in Norse legend felt betrayed. He swore revenge on Odin for betraying him, for tricking him. You know, let's let's talk for a minute about Fenrir. Uh, Fenrir. Yes, he is the wolf, and he is the child of Loki. Now, Odin had been told, uh, told that Fenrir would eat him. Fenrir would be the one who killed him. And so in his quest to stave off the, the events of Ragnarok, he sought to have Fenrir isolated and bound. That way there, there'd be nothing he could do. And of course he presented it as a contest. There was no bond that Fenrir couldn't break. Eventually, he found one that Fenrir couldn't break. And due to that, Tyr lost a hand. Because Fenrir demanded that one of the gods put his hand in, into his mouth. And when Fenrir had found he'd been tricked, well, he snapped Tyr's hand right off. Let's talk for a minute. For, just, just linger on this card for just a moment. I've told people this tons of times. You're going to be the protagonist of your own story. You're going to be the hero or the heroine of your own story. But keep in mind... 
you will also be the villain in someone else's story. That's, in a, that's an inescapable fact. But here's the thing. When you take a person and you vilify them so much, some people will bend over backwards and make themselves absolutely miserable trying to disprove that, only to find they've wasted time and energy. And then there are some people whom you have pushed and pushed and pushed that they assume that that's what you want and that's what they'll give you. It doesn't make sense sometimes. There are some people that are like, well, I remember when this person was, you know, rather, uh, rather personable, and now they've just gone crazy. Well, what were the, what were the factors that drove them to that? Oh, look who they hang around. Well, why, why, why are they not hanging around a different crowd? Why? You have to ask that question. Because if it, if it was a crowd that kept pushing them, they got pushed away. They, they were like, I'm done. I'm not going to sit here and make myself miserable for this bunch over here. It's like I've said before. When nothing you do is good enough for someone, do nothing for them. Find people who will appreciate you. And guess what? That's what some people do. That's why some people end up being perceived as villainous because they've just accepted this is who I am this is what I like this is what I do and they're not gonna be told that they can't they're not gonna pretend that it's not good for them so we we need to start letting go of this need and desire to other someone else you know what I'm saying? Because eventually they assume that's what you want and then you get it. Be careful what you wish for there. The guide, on the other hand, the Norns, these were the ones that told Odin, hey, Fenrir is going to kill you. Now, this group right here can show, this is going to be very indicative of these cards today. Because as they are guides, they can show you, you know, if you continue along this path, this, you know, X is going to happen. There's really nothing you can do about it. But if you deviate from that path, you can change things. So right now, the message that we're getting is, you can change, you can change outcomes. But you can't bash your head against the wall and bitch that you've got a concussion. Know what I mean? Alright. Let's get right down to it. Emulating in nature. Owl spirit. Think about owls. They see very, very clearly. Now they may be a, they may appear to be very beautiful birds. But again, here's where looks can be deceiving because they are predators and they are nocturnal and a good sized owl can snatch up another another unlikely bit of prey like that I mean they just swoop down grab it and poof, off they go hoo hoo indeed so again you know what let's uh let's let's try to see things a little clearly let's get our heads out of our asses today know what I mean some people have their heads so far up their own ass they still can't see shit clearly. Let that sink in. Alright. <clears throat> so, in your tarot, we have a Seven of Swords. Starting to feel like um, th there's a little stealth in this card. And honestly, I see a lot of failed stealth, a lot of failed stealth checks here, because, <clears throat> to be honest, this is something being stolen from you. It's literally being taken away. 
the thing is you're actually catching it in progress. You're seeing it. You're seeing it happen in real time. And, you know, time to call that out. But... This Two of Cups is normally a soulmate card, but in reverse, I'm seeing separation. And while this is normally sort of a do your own thing and follow your intuition, now's the time, now is, now is a different time. I will never tell you not to follow your intuition. But I will tell you right now, you're probably not doing that. You're probably not following your intuition. And the fact that we have this card coming up again, to me, is a little strange. Because what I'm seeing is that we are very passionate about what we love. So I'm not seeing intuition. I'm seeing passion. We are, we are very much engaged in what it is we love but the question is <clears throat> are we allowing or are we allowing ourselves to see it the situation as it is or are we are we trying to see something that we want when it's not there that's a really good question too so Right here in your light workers oracle. Okay, here we go. Cosmic heart, cosmic Christ. Remember what we talked about yesterday? We talked about godlike power. What is it? It put simply it's creation. The ability to create is godlike. It's entropy, destruction, and antith and uh, <coughs> sorry, destruction, entropy, and that sort of thing. That's antithesis. So you have two different things. You have synthesis and you have antithesis. I'm seeing a lot of antithesis in here. But I'm also seeing a way to bring it back to synthesis. Let me tell you why. Oh, there we go. Starting from here, we have our joys, we have our passions, we have our desires, and we have the ability to create <coughs> the world that we want. You know, I was watching the uh, Basic Experts video yesterday, and he said, um, he said, creatively, this is very stifling, because he is working on a game that was set during the period of the Aztecs when they, when they, um, when the Spanish conquistadors came over, and they worked with the Spanish, and, you know, pretty much gave them, gave over the, uh, gave over the farm there if memory serves me correctly, and John, if you're watching, <laughs> comment down below. Your, your research on that's way better than mine. But in, in any case, the Spanish did take over. In his setting, one of the things that is mentioned is that the, the Aztecs did, in fact, engage in child sacrifice. That much happened. And according to um, Drive Through RPG's uh, parent, comp uh, parent company, One Bookshelf, John would not be allowed to put that in his game without their express written permission. So now he has to go and ask permission to put this in his game. It's not like he's going to be giving graphic descriptions of it. It's just this is what happened. This is part of that setting. And I guarantee you, if it is Wizards of the Coast putting out uh, the, the old Dark Sun books, they are going to get that permission straight across the board. 
uh, John will probably not. And he brought, he brought this point up. He's like, the whole point of me being an independent creator was to not have to answer for something I wanted to put in my game. I wanted to make the games I wanted to make and see if they sold. That's the way a free market, and this is coming from me now, that's the way a free market works. If I thought that, that was so aberrant, I probably wouldn't buy it. But the fact of the matter is, I'm probably gonna. <laughs> I don't know if I'll ever get to play it. There's a whole bunch of games I have I'll probably never get to play, but I do have them. Now, that creation, that ability to create something and speak your world into being, whether it's on paper or whether it's for real, it comes from this. You are born with gifts. You can either develop them or you can ignore them. So what are yours? Because that's where your passions are. Your passions are speaking to these two things right here. <clears throat> and then we have power of the divine masculine and let me tell you a little something about this so right now the divine masculine the divine masculine in you knows when to accept and when to say no to a belief fear habit person or situation the divine masculine energy exists within all men and women. It rallies the spirit and responds to in times when you may feel drained, taken advantage of, or overwhelmed by too many choices and demands. It cuts through the confusion and comes with choice and priority setting. It refuses to be distracted and keeps you from being dissuaded from your life purpose. I think those are very, very powerful words to live by. And we're looking at that again. That uh, seven of swords. Feel like some feel like something's being stolen from you. Call it out. Feel like something's being taken from you. Call it out. Don't give up now. Now is not the time to give up. Now is the time to push forward. As I stated yesterday. Once the chaos, the pandemonium, and the confusion ends, you know, you can pretty much see what's going on. It's become very, very clear now. But now that you can see clearly, now that you know what's coming, now you can move forward. You can move forward with a clear head. Clear, clear cooler heads prevailing here, people. We have Thurisaz, yeah, no shit. We have Gabo, again, no shit. <laughs> and we have Avaz. So, Thurisaz is about those conflicts, those challenges. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, I submit to you that the storm cannot consume you if you are the storm. can harness its energy, if you can ride that wave, let me tell you something, sometimes, and, and I'm going to say this, look at, look at Netflix, look at Disney, Netflix is laying off even more people now, they lost a ton of subscribers nearly overnight, they were losing them in a trickle, and what does economists usually say? It's usually trickle, 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 flood. Well, the flood has come. Disney stock price tanked. They're losing money as well. They've called an emergency meeting uh, just recently that I've seen. But what they're putting out there is showing they still haven't learned. I've noticed something. It's usually these these ultra corporate types. They uh, they look at something and they go, "How could this have happened?" Where are they usually? 
They're sitting in offices. They're sitting in boardrooms. They are not in touch with their audience at all. And they usually have a bunch of yes men going, oh, don't worry about those people on the internet voicing concerns. They're, they're, they're just, you know, this istorphobe. No joke. Oh, okay, well, we won't worry about what people said on the internet. You know, might want to start. That's why your stock price tanked. People were selling that off. Again, with the with the gifts that you were born with, you can choose to develop them, which is something I highly recommend, or you can choose to ignore them, which is something I don't. And then finally, move forward with it. Because so that's what this means. This means movement. It is the horse. It also signifies change. Remember, when your greatest talents and abilities, when your gifts that you've spent time developing aren't good enough for one entity, take them over to someone else who will appreciate you. It's probably going to be hard, I'm not going to lie. No kind of transition, no, no change is easy. But in the end, it's worth it. So if you're, with your creative spark, with that bit of the divine within you, no one has any right to tell you, you cannot exercise that here. And even if they do, you go and exercise it where you can, make your product stand out, make you stand out. Become untouchable because you will be eventually it'll probably be a long road it'll probably be a slow process but eventually something's got to give and you can't keep at it forever not under rules that stifle you gotta go where you can breathe free might require you uh, putting in a whole lot of effort that you're not used to putting in, but it will work. Alright, so, got to get out of here. Got to get this thing uh, put into the computer for you. I rebooted everything last night. I don't know if Odyssey's going to have another stroke. <laughs> Sorry for not getting that link out yesterday. Uh, Odyssey has been really weird about its uploads lately. I don't know what's going on with it, but um, I rebooted everything. I did a little maintenance that I was probably overdue with doing. And, you know, time constraints, people, they hit me too. But anyway, I will see you on high notes. And just remember... Much like the, that divine spark inside of you. I love you all. Take care of yourselves and each other. Always do what lights you up. And if anyone has a problem with it, tell them to get a fucking pair of shades. And as always, shine on.